How's it going everyone? This is the latest charts for seismic activity and the earthquake situation looks like stable for now. You got low to mid magnitude ranges there is no red, no six pointers it's falling back in the 18th you can see some fives in different areas but it looks like the ring of fire for now is stable on the 17th you did have a red 6-2 east of South Sandwich Islands and you had a 6.8 in Papua New Guinea now other than that in the last couple, well excuse me, you had Chile too other than that since the 17th well we're not really seeing the Sumatra size magnitude and back to Sumatra, remember when I put the the warning out and then the updated information and I mentioned I'd be taking a look at some things above our head to see if there was anything that had a correlation to helping this along. Well, I've looked at the lunar cycle and see where we were at on the 11th. And you can come down here. This is uh, lunaf.com l-u-n-a-f dot com and they have some different tools here you can use you know you can highlight over here it's got some health stuff for your body cleansing and moon diet if you think that would help you and then you have a little you can click on this here and it has the moon and zodiac signs and the, and the lunar influence and then you've got one here, your solar activity and real-time space weather data. And then they have the sky above you now and the current positions of the planets and the constellations. But anyhow, back to the date of April the 11th, you can see we were in between shift of phase, cycle. We were moving into the last quarter we had been in full and we we're coming out of that going into uh, the last quarter and this is the outlay of how things looked as far as the planets go on the 11th <clears throat> and I've not really seen any interesting alignment that I think would have contributed to it and this is straight on view you can see we're we're going to leave the big boy Saturn out here and when we try to see if anything was going on we can blow her up real good and you can see here's the the earth and the moon and we know that we were moving into a different phase coming out of full and we can see that we were not in direct correlation with the Sun aligned with anything I would not been able to see any real thing as far as an alignment goes combined with the lunar cycle that would have aggravated or heightened you know, the seismic activity you can you can see that pretty well everything of course, like I've mentioned before, these orbit diagrams are not exactly, you know, the animation is not exactly perfect, but you can check more than one source that has uh, diagrams like this, you know, solar system diagrams, and you can compare, and you'll see pretty well the same thing. I just don't see any direct anything as far as like a year ago when we were having alignments and we had the common element mixture we'll just go ahead and you can see how they were all clustered up like that but there wasn't really anything 
that look like straight line or anything even close to being it to what it looks like to me and I've I've looked several times and I've, I've thought for a while about it and it just doesn't look like the, the alignments played a part this time in it so we can't I can't really say that uh, anything above our head contributed to the Sumatra eight pointers that day I mean it just doesn't look like it so on to a different issue there's been some things going on oops let me go ahead and get that out of here there's been some things going on in the world and let's Go ahead and keep ourselves up to date. If you've been keeping track of the Syrian situation, you hear all this stuff about the UN, peace treaty, you know, lay down of arms, we're going to have a stoppage, and, and then we went from that to, well, we have a treaty, but there's still some, some fighting going on and some deaths occurring, and, well, it's a sham as far as me looking at it and the things that I've I've read and the thought that I've given because you've got Bashar Assad here and he says okay well I'll accept the treaty but I want a guarantee from everybody fighting against me that they're gonna lay their arms down and then the guys fighting against them say well okay but we're still gonna have all these protests and stuff and we're going to test them to see if they're going to do anything when we protest. Well, I can guarantee you they're probably going to do something when you protest. So, there ain't going to be nothing really calming down. And I said it before, I'll stand behind it. This guy is not going to give up. You hear Barack Obama say, and Hillary Clinton say, and whoever else wants to jump on their little bandwagon and do as they're told say it's not a question of if he's going it's when he's going well it's not a question of how many lies can you pump down us it's a question of knowing the history of Syria and the background of the family that ruled it his daddy didn't go nowhere when he done his stuff back then this guy's not going nowhere you're gonna have to kill him. That's the only way Bashar Assad is gonna leave as the leader of Syria. And I'll eat my hat if he voluntarily gives up and quits as a Syrian leader. I have a New York brand new New York Jets cap and I'll eat every bit of it one piece at a time if this guy ever gives up and leave Syria as their leader. If he does, he'll say it again. It'll be because they killed him. So, whatever you're reading and stuff, you have to read in, into what what are they not telling you? Because the articles only tell you what they want you to know. They're not going to tell you what they don't want you to know. So when you read an article, you're going to have to ask the questions like I said before what are they not telling you in the article and you have to go out and find it yourself that's just the way they've set the game up this one here he's a disgrace he is supposed to be the leader if you watch him closely and you think about things everything you know that I don't see anything but everything that he or his cohorts could claim that was a good thing, well, he's always standing up there taking the credit for it, if there's any to be given. But anything bad, well, it's always something I inherited from the guy behind me that I took over for. So we've already seen the corruptness of this man 
and the people that he has put in place, his czars and his different heads of, oh, like the energy secretary that okayed all the loans to go to the bankrupt solar companies. And now we're getting into the TSA and the Secret Service and all their dirty dealings. Uh, we've already got it, Eric Holder and the Fast and Furious gun walking scandal. The list can be gone on and on. But the latest thing about the, the uh, Columbia ordeal, you did not hear Barack Obama say if these men were found to be guilty that they would be charged and jailed. You did not hear him say that. I have not heard him apologize to the American people for their conduct or spending the money. What I have heard him say is he would be angry if these allegations turn out to be true. Well, gee thanks. You're going to be angry. That fixes everything, doesn't it? And how about the TSA deal? The captain of the ship is responsible for the actions of all the crew. This guy is the captain of the ship. He's responsible for everything that's going on. If he's going to claim he didn't know what was going on, he's going to say, I have no control. Well, he takes credit for everything good, right? Though he has to take the credit for this because if he's on top of the job and he runs things so great the way that he claims he does then he was well aware of all these incidences TSA, Solyndra, uh, Columbia, all of it the buck stops with him and what you're seeing is open corruptness and we've got lucky enough to uh, actually find out about a few things and we're not even I didn't put anything up here about this right now but let's not forget Breitbart we're not even going where Breitbart's at right now I'm gonna save that for a little I'm looking into some stuff on that and I'm gonna save that for later on where I've got a little more time to to make just a full video about that but you think about things and you you think hard I don't believe in true coincidences I believe situations can be created that lead to a desired outcome that appears like a coincidence but I always just don't believe in a straight out oops that's just a coincidence so I just can't buy that. Barack Obama is corrupt. There's just no doubt about it. And you think about what Breitbart said the day he died. You know, he was going to release video that he claimed was going to crush Barack Obama, that he claimed was going to show him with communist organizations on the campus in his college years. I remember when he campaigned everybody tried to tell people William Ayers and the Weatherman Underground the guy's a socialist radical. Nobody mentioned the word communist that I had heard but socialist and radical and you know, we pretty well put a name tag on him back then and everybody laughed and then he come out and said you know or that was just in my youth you know that was just youthful indiscretion it doesn't mean anything you know I'm forty something years old it was just a thing I did when I was a kid well now we know that was a crock he just he also quoted as saying you wanna know who I am and what I'm about well look at the people I surround myself with yes we have and we verified it and we know what you are so we're coming into an election and what has happened here it looks to me like it's been just a sideshow with the Republican GOP 
uh, campaign trail nomination deal with 50,000 gazillion debates. Uh, it looks to me like they put five losers out there that have no chance of beating him. And I'll be a monkey's uncle if Mitt Romney can beat him. And when you think about it, they control both parties. And by they, I mean they, the people that really run the world, control both of the parties. So when you put a guy in, or when they put a guy in, because they're putting two people out there in front of you, and it doesn't really matter who you vote for. It's predetermined who they're going to let get in. And they'll manipulate the vote and the total returns to uh, make that outcome what they want. That's all. Now Mitt Romney couldn't even win the nomination last time. He couldn't even beat McCain last time. Now he's back again. So ask yourself the question. You know, you had Rick Santorum up there. Well, Rick Santorum couldn't even win a re-election in his own home state. So you know he wasn't going to win. Rick Perry was a buffoon that couldn't remember what he was told to say. Obviously scripted, and he couldn't memorize anything. Ron Paul... Uh, Ron Paul ain't got a snowball of chance in Hades. Yeah, I can't help the people that like him. Uh, you hear that word progressive, turn around and run away from it. There ain't no good progressives out there. And you need to do your homework on the truth of progressivism. It is not a good thing. Progressive Democrats, progressive Republicans, progressive independents, progressive anything is not a good thing. So, <clears throat> you see Ron Paul still hanging in. Ask yourself the question, why is somebody that's getting 4% still in? They don't have a snowball's chance of winning. He's doing what he's told. He's not a leader. He's a follower. So, you had a bunch of jokes out there debating, and now they've pretty well whittled it down to two. This one here, they're going to keep him in. He's done such a good job of doing everything they've told him. And I believe they just had another little, they could have had a little possible budget deal. And I believe they missed their deadline again. And we still have no budget. So, oh, go through your history book. Look back, find out how many presidents ever ran terms without having a budget. And I think you're going to find this guy is at the top. This one here, he'd been in the paper here over the Easter time. And if you read the article, maybe they had it on the television news, I didn't hear it there. But he is not in real good shape, like I've said before. This guy here, he's spoken a lot of uh, heresy. And the only way you're going to find that out <coughs> is if you read some of the books he's written. Because they're not going to take all the things he said that were heresy and put them together and compile them in a volume and put it out there for you to read. It's, it's different things that he has said throughout the years in his books, and now he's a pope. So whenever you look at what this man has said, and the, the idea that he kind of parlays, you can get inside of his mind and see what is he really what is he really thinking besides what he displays to the public outwardly? Now, in the books, you know, books aren't read over the television. They're in the bookstore. 
or you have to copy from online or something like that to know what's in them. You know, the TV is only going to give you what what they want you to know and see. The point being, I've always believed he's a, a heretic from the things I've read of the thoughts in his mind. And he's old. He's in his 80s. And you could read in that article that he's having, at least right now, he's having walking problems and he's frail. So he's not, they don't have a, the same kind of Pope mobile, but he's, he's not walking. You know, when he's got a long way to, to walk right now, he got a little contraption to where uh, it's being moved along there where he doesn't have to walk. Well, this is telling you he's getting up there and whatever's going on, he's probably not going to have a lot longer left. And, and I've said it before, lots of people know they've done their homework, but a lot of them haven't. St. Malachi predicted all the popes in succession uh, so far with 100% accuracy. In the list of popes to come from his time to now, there's only one more after this guy. And the last one will be in league with the Antichrist. And the last one will be the dark pope, the black pope, the evil pope, the false prophet, whatever name you know you want to give him. He'll be the last one. So this guy here, pay attention to his health and everything. Because even though he might be an evil guy hiding in a good, you know, facade, outwardly, even evil guys die. So, he ain't going to be hanging around at the time of the arrival of the AC, or just shortly prior to. But this one has to be gone, because the next one is going to endorse the bad man, the AC, Antichrist, as a good guy, as the Savior. So, I wanted to bring that out. In case nobody really saw it about how his health is not real great right now you know I don't see this guy going too much longer <clears throat> I don't and by too much longer I don't mean like two weeks or anything I mean uh, in the, you know I don't see him here two years from now I just don't the timing is everything like I've said before and all these pieces have to come together and I don't see this guy hitting 90 <clears throat> I just don't and uh, I don't see him just stepping down and saying I'm sick and frail and junk I want to give it up to somebody else that's a possibility I don't remember that happening I'll go through the history of the popes and look and see if that's ever been done but I don't remember it it's not striking me off the top of my head as something that that has been uh, done in our lifetime so put on your shield armor because 2012 wasn't just about earthquakes and floods and wars and, and great changes it was a mixture of everything but the bottom line is it was a return of their God whom they worshipped so that's the biggest thing of 2012 the return of the God that they worshipped uh, we're gonna see that's one thing for sure we're in the fourth month we've had a couple eight-pointers already we had a town get pretty well flattened by the tornadoes here in my state Woodward Oklahoma last count I knew there were 98 homes destroyed and six deaths two of which were children uh, they had basically no warning they ran it took down the 
the uh, power and the sirens and stuff pretty much so people only had like three minutes I believe somewhere in that range so there wasn't too much time to do anything and then it was flattened Woodward's well, a little over an hour away from me to my west southwest so I pray for all the people that lost loved ones and they're devastated by the loss of the things that they had in their homes my brother is still having a whole lot of problems and there have been some other uh, things, family things combined on top of that that I, I, I can't go into here on YouTube right now at the moment but it's just contributing to the recovery of his physical recovery because now this has got into a whole different area besides his physicality so if you would please continue to pray for him and his family because the problems have just been multiplied like a the whole big picture of problems for him has just been multiplied by about a thousand <clears throat> hopefully the Lord will smile upon him in one way or another whether he takes him or not but the suffering he's going through him and his family there'll be something good waiting for him on the other side for sure if it is his time I'll accept it I just don't want to see him suffer but he's he's giving it his best shot just don't believe anything this guy says he speaketh with forked tongue he is a master of deception he is going to use certain tools to be able to create division and that is how he will attempt to conquer he has already done it he's pitted lower income and middle class against rich people he has sought to uh, upset the, the women trying to rally the women around him to get their votes that's how he does these things he just he just creates anger and division and then everybody who's feeling the same way that he is trying to make you feel they all flock to him and he will he will probably go for the Hispanics you know and touch on to the illegal immigration stuff and he's gonna do the same exact type of campaign that he did before he doesn't have any other thing to do it with he can't claim success in the economy there is none so, you're gonna see the same rhetoric you're gonna have to hear the same trash you're gonna have to see his face on TV a, a million times so just turn it you know pretty much all most of the time you just have to turn it take as much of it as you can stand and get as much information as you can and then figure out what they're not telling you and then turn it don't give him a, don't give him the time because he's not giving you the truth well I'll keep my eyes open we do have a uh, I believe we got an upcoming meteor shower so everybody can look forward to trying to see some of that the skies are clear here now I don't know what they're going to be like in a little in a few more days but maybe I'll get to see something I'll look if I if it's possible that I can get out and it's clear I'll get out and I'll be a watching that's one thing I haven't been too successful with is uh being able to watch the meteor showers I'm gonna really make a good uh, full-hearted attempt this time you know, I've tried before sometimes uh, it's been cloudy couldn't see nothing cold or whatever too cold to 
stay outside too hot you know there's certain different things that led me to stay in but I want to check this out and maybe I can actually get some photos of it and I'll keep my eyes open for the earthquakes and everything you know me now there's one more thing I want to go back if you'll go to uh, prophecyinthenews.com they had a real interesting uh, sit down with a, uh, a friend of Gary's and he, he brought up something really interesting about Isaiah and some things Isaiah said back then to the Jewish people when they were not following God and abiding by what God wanted so he had to bring some pain on them to try and turn them around back to him and it was interesting to hear this discussion about the parallels between <coughs> what Tom Deschel said the day after 9-11 and you compared it to what the situation was back then in ancient Israel and what they were doing and when you put some thought into it it made a lot of sense and there was a real comparison to it. So, the U.S. may be judged, yes, just like that man was describing. And the 911 may have been a precursor to following things to come. So I'm urging everybody to watch that site. You know, J.R. passed away, so he's not sitting with Gary at the table anymore. But Gary's an expert, and Gary's an honest man. And what he's telling when he when he makes these shows and brings these guests on can really fill your cabinet full of information and give you the power to understand and and see a little bit farther into the future about how this stuff is going to play out. It's a very useful channel. All the subject matter discussed on there can only do any the only thing it can do is help you and empower you. Well, I'm urging you to go over there. You ain't got to buy any of the books or the videos or nothing. That's just the way they make their living, to be able to continue to put that show on and give you what you need to put on your armor, your armor of God. So go over there, if you would, and watch this latest video and try to understand what's coming. Because we're, we're, we are paralleling what happened back then. I mean, think about our country. We've, we're killing kids, millions of them with abortions. Uh, we've got porno and prostitution and everything. We've got Sodom and Gomorrah every day over here. And we know what happened to them. We're not, we're not doing right as a whole. And, and a lot of people don't understand nations in, in God's eyes, whole nations are judged, regardless of whether they have a cluster of people in there that are do good and doing the right thing. You know, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, well, we've got a whole bunch of people that are not doing right, just like in Sodom and Gomorrah. And it didn't turn out well for them. And it's not going to turn out well for us and, and you've got all this other stuff that's that's timed to where it looks like it's going to come about the same time you know you're talking 2012 and Mayan and 5772, 5773 and war and Iran things are happening well, this has got kind of long-winded, but I've been gone for a week, so I wanted to put as much in as I could. I wish each of you the best. Just because I'm not on quite as much as usual right now doesn't mean I don't think about all of you and pray for all of you and appreciate all of you. May the Lord bless every one of us because we sure need it. And people all over the world, we must pray for them. It's, it's our duty. It's our obligation 
because they need us to pray for them. The more prayers, the better. Prayers go straight to God. You know, you, when you pray, focus on what you're doing, praying. You know, don't let anything else come into your mind while you're doing it. I promise you, they go straight to God. He hears every one of them. He doesn't leave anybody out. He knows what's in our hearts. And until I talk to you next time, do the best you can in whatever situation you're in. And always be aware of what's going on around you and around the world. Until next time, try to keep looking up because things are going to start happening.